Hey Scratchers, today I'm going to show you how to build a scrolling backdrop, which you can use for games that go left to right or top to bottom. However you want to build the game, these are the basic skills you need to build a scrolling backdrop. I'm starting with a blank scratch project. I know, who would have thought? Now we're going to make a backdrop that scrolls across the screen, but backdrops can't move. And let me prove that to you. Let's go and select our backdrop. And you're gonna look for a backdrop that has a, the scrollability factor, meaning both sides of it can be connected together to create a really long scrolling effect. So the Night City is the perfect backdrop. Now, let me sh prove to you that you can't move a backdrop. Click on the stage so that the code is selected. Right here, stage selected, no motion blocks. So what we'll do is we'll actually move the image from the backdrop costume onto a sprite. So go to the backdrop menu, take this and drop it right on top of Scratch Cat. Then when you click on Scratch Cat, you'll see that that backdrop is actually there now. We'll get rid of the Scratch Cat because all we want to focus on on this video is the backdrop, which is now a sprite. Backdrop, sprite, backdrop, sprite. I know it's confusing. Okay, so let's zoom out so I can see this. Now, a little hidden secret is although it looks like this backdrop fills the whole screen, it may or may not. So I'm gonna convert it to vector, then I'm going to select the whole thing, and I'm gonna make sure by dragging it to the corner that, oh, look at that, there's a little space down there. And let's see if we can, oh, how to make it a little wider, okay. Once you have it maximized, then you're ready to scroll. Because let's explain a couple things. First of all, how wide is an image, a sprite? It's 480 pixels or scratch units. I don't know if they're pixels or units, but it's 480. But wait a minute, I thought it was 240. Well, 240 on one side, then there's the zero, and then 240 on the other side is 480. So we want that width to be exactly 480 so that when it scrolls across the screen, it will, it will finish and then the next, the next image will scroll. Now I have to make something really clear. This lesson is about backdrops, but they're not actually backdrops. So go in the backdrop stage menu and select blank. We don't want to have a backdrop behind the sprites because this is really confusing. We're going to be making two sprites that look like backdrops that travel across the screen. And the reason I'm moving my hands are because when the sprite reaches the edge, it automatically moves to the beginning. So it creates kind of this slideshow. And because there's two of them, you can actually trick your eyes into thinking that it's an endless scrolling backdrop. So make sure that there is no backdrop behind your sprite and that here's your sprite, you selected the sprite and we're gonna add some code. The first thing you're going to do is make two variables. Two, how come two? Well, check this out. Make a variable, we're gonna call it X position or X pause for short. And this is gonna be the first backdrop, so we'll call it X position one. Then make another one called Y position one. There, these are going to refer to the, the X and Y position of this back, or I said backdrop, it's actually a sprite, but it looks like a backdrop. Yes, so in the very beginning, we're going to be setting both of these variables. First, let's set the X position, then we'll set the Y position. Now we name these variables X position and Y position, but they actually don't have a value. Let's look in the motion block menu. At the bottom, there, there are these reporter blocks that actually hold the X position and Y position of a sprite, but they report back the actual position. We're going to be creating our own positioning. That's why we made our own va variables instead of using these. 
we want to actually set them to a position. So x position is going to be 0, y position is going to be 0. That puts it right in the middle. So we'll go to motion, and we'll use the go to block. And instead of going to this x, y position, we will use the variable x position and y position. Now all we have to do is put a event block on the top to start the game, and it will position the sprite right where we want it. This sprite will start in the middle, and then it will glide to the left like this. The way we'll do that is by using a forever loop to make it constantly move. So go in Control Menu, grab a forever loop. What we'll do is we'll change this value right here, this variable x position. So go to va variables and grab change x position by negative 10. And then we want to we want to put another go to in there. So go to motion and we'll say go to and we'll actually just copy these variables right here. There, let's let's see if this works. Okay, look, do you see how the y position stays at zero? Because we didn't actually want to change it. But perhaps you will in the future, so I use that variable. The x position is changing, and look, it's going really, really negative right now. So we want to say when the x position reaches a certain point to reposition the sprite. We'll use an if statement to do that. Go into control, grab the if block. Now we need an operator that's going to be the less than operator because we're going to say if the x position goes less than negative 480. Whoops, there we go. So that means negative 480 is as far as you can. They take the whole sprite, the whole backdrop sprite, move it completely off the screen. That would be negative 480. So we'll put that right in here so that it's inside the forever loop. And if if it does go to negative 480, we're going to reset the x position. So we'll say set x position to, not 0, to 480. So that will basically shift it all the way back to the beginning. What we should see now is a loop. There is the loop we are looking for. Now we're going to make the second backdrop by duplicating the first one. So just right click on the sprite, click duplicate. Now these are going to be exactly the same, so if you click the green flag, they should be right on top of each other. The problem is still there, that giant white space. So we'll stop it, we'll go into Sprite 2, and we'll create new variables. So click Make a Variable, and we'll call it X Position 2. We'll make another variable called Y Position 2. And the number 2 represents Sprite 2. Then come into the code for Sprite 2 and change these so, they, so that you have the correct variable. So this would be Y position and X position 2. Uh, we're not going to use this one anymore. We're going to replace it with X position and then Y position 2. Down here, this one will be X position 2. This will be, boy, if you do this too quickly, you're going to make a mistake. So concentrate. And this one is X position 2. And then finally, it's going to be setting X position 2. If you did everything correctly, it still should look exactly the same. There should be a big gap. Because all we did is replace the variables with different named variables. But they're doing exactly the same thing. You can actually monitor the numbers right here. So how do we make it look like it's an endless screen? We add 480 to the start position on one. So that one is always 480 behind the other. Isn't that brilliant? All you have to do is come up here where it says set X position. You just set it to 480 to start. There, now it has a perfect lead. Oh, there's a line in there. If you find that there's a white line or the sprites just don't connect quite right, you can kind of determine which sprite the has the problem by clicking on the sprite and seeing it glow. You'll actually see that this white line is included on this sprite, but not on this one. So this is the one I need to work on. I'll go into the costumes. I'll make sure I'm in vector mode. Click on the selector and see if I can't drag this sprite a little 
bit wider. I need to drag that right there. There's a little bit, it's a little bit off, but pretty good. You're gonna have to do some fine adjustment just to, because the scratch editor, you can't really see the full width on your screen. Okay, we're almost done, but there's one final really important code block you need to add to a scrolling backdrop, and that's in the looks menu, and that has to do with the layers. You want to make the backdrop go to the backward layer. So go backward, 10 layers. Why 10? Because you just want to get it way back there. Why? Because every time you add a sprite to your game, it's like adding another layer. And you want the backdrop to, well, it's not really a backdrop. Remember, it's just a sprite. So you want to make sure it's behind everything in your game. So go backwards, 10 layers works. And the final step is to add your character. So I'm going to add the, the brown bear. He has some nice costumes. So he has this walking costume collection. So I'll put that in a forever loop. And there we go. We have our scrolling background with a bear walking.